Good morning. Well, it is so good to be with each of you this morning and to worship our great and our glorious God together. Even if it is just seeing you from here above, it's still great to be with you. I have a really important question I want to begin with this morning. And go ahead and raise your hand to participate in this important question. How many of you have bumper stickers on your car? <laughs> More than one? Yeah, of course. How many of you have bumper stickers? Do any of you have any stickers on your car? You do. Um, do you have any decals on your windows? Maybe something like that? Probably. Um, maybe, don't raise your hand, maybe you have a political sticker on your car. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> right? That almost seems a little too confrontational, at least for me. Maybe you have a political sign in your yard. Still too confrontational for me. I'm a number nine on the Enneagram, if you've ever done the Enneagram, right? Some of us fellow nines. We are peaceful mediators. Everything that we do seeks to increase peace in every situation. So here's a few bumper stickers and window decals that I would like to approve, and I think that maybe we could all have on our cars, or maybe not. The first one says, do you follow Jesus this close? <laughs> I think that's a good one, right? Don't you wish you had that on the back of your car? Just let me stop for a second. To actually have you interacting with me is golden. <laughs> for six months... I've been reading from God's Word, and Bob and Chris and Claudia and I, and if we say something, there's no interaction. <laughs> so you have no idea if anybody's even listening. So it's glorious to have you uh, here with us this morning. Second bumper sticker maybe that I think is kind of cool, and maybe you have this one. <laughs> Honk if you love Jesus. Text him if you want to meet him. The first time I saw that, I thought, what does that mean? <laughs> Text him if you want to meet him. If I had a sticker on my car as a number nine, a peaceful mediator who loves humor, I would probably have something similar to this one. It takes a second, doesn't it? Visualize world peas. But then again, I don't like vegetables. Remember that from a few weeks ago? But we're talking about the fruit of the Spirit, and we're talking about peace. And so what better than a sticker that says, visualize world peace? Another one that might be fitting, I think, for this series even more so would be this one for this particular Sunday. If you don't know Jesus, you're not going to know peace. But if you do know Him and He is in your life, you will know peace. This is true because peace comes from Jesus. It originates from Him. It finds Him as its source. I know because even His birth announcement told me of this. In Isaiah, it says, for unto us a child is born, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Everlasting Father, Mighty God, and Prince of Peace. Prince of Peace. It originates and starts with him. Fits with what Paul says in Ephesians 2, and Paul has these words for us this morning. And this will kind of bring us towards communion later too. It says, in Christ, you who were far away... In Jesus, for those of you who were far away, you now have been brought near for He Himself, for He Himself is our peace. He is indeed our peace. What a statement this morning. I mean, can you imagine beginning each day by simply making the statement, He is my peace. If you haven't said it yet this morning, maybe go ahead and say it out loud now if you're willing to at home or wherever you're at. Jesus is my peace. Go ahead and say it out loud if you want to. Yeah. You might be in chaos today and turmoil because he's not your peace. You might be experiencing disruption and vibrations in your life because you haven't made that statement that he truly is the one who sets forth peace in your life each and every day. One author says it this way, you must first have the peace with God before you can experience the peace of God. You have to have peace with Him before you can experience the peace of Him. Well, let's hear what our Prince of Peace says to us this morning about peace as we turn in our Bibles now together to John chapter 14. And we're going to be looking together at verses 15 through 27 of John 14. And this morning, the Cook family will be reading God's Word for us, but before that video starts, would you stand in honor of God's Word this morning? John 14, 15 to 27, please. Jesus. 
Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you, and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will also live. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show them, show myself to them. Then Ju Judas said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus replied, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus promises time. Thanks to the Cook family for the reading of God's Word this morning. There's really one verse I'd like to focus on with you if you still have your Bibles open or your devices on. I'd like us to focus on verse 27. And verse 27 simply says, Jesus saying, my peace I, what's the next word? I leave you, my peace I give you. So we're going to split those two things up this morning and talk about what Jesus means when he says, I'm going to leave you peace, but then I'm going to also give you peace. Peace be to you. It was a common greeting in Jesus' day as people would see you coming on the road or as you'd be walking away. It was really like hello and goodbye when somebody would say peace to you. And the Hebrew word they would use is shalom. And so as if you came upon somebody, you'd say, peace be to you. Can you imagine your interactions today beginning with Peace be to you. It's the first thing you say. And as they walk away, the last thing you say, hey, peace be to you. But Jesus changes it a little bit when he says, peace I leave with you. It's like he's saying, I'm going to give this to you and leave it for you, but all you have to do is receive it. You can have it, but you have to receive it, Jesus says, by peace I leave with you. An important thing to note here is that Jesus says that the peace that he's offering, it comes by the presence and the power of his Holy Spirit. Look at verses 16 and 27 if you still have your Bibles open. In verse 16, Jesus says, he'll leave his counselor to be with us, the spirit of truth. In verse 26, we heard the cooks read, Jesus says, the counselor, the Holy Spirit will teach us and remind us of what Jesus has said. So the Spirit is the one who guides us into truth. He moves us away from sin. He directs us towards truth. He helps us to find the will of the Lord, which all together that Spirit provides shalom. It comes by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit who is in our lives. Interestingly enough, when Jesus says, I leave my peace with you, the original language, the Hebrew language, actually can transfer that word or convey that Jesus is saying, I shower, I fall my peace on you. So when he says, I leave it with you, he's falling it all over you. And in addition to that, it also means that you are forgiven. I leave my peace means I shower you and I forgive you. It's as if Jesus is saying, my peace, I shower you. As I forgive you, you experience my grace and my peace. So that word shalom, let's take a look at that for a moment, and you've probably heard sermons on that word, but the word shalom, it means completeness, it means wholeness, it means reconciliation, and then the one I like the best is it means putting back together. It's as if Jesus is saying, I'm going to leave you with a peace that reconciles you, that makes you whole, 
that puts you back together again. Jesus says, my peace, I leave you. This is the kind of peace that only comes from Him. I know so because in verse 27, He says, I do not give you as the world gives you. If this is true, why is it so hard for us to receive His peace? Why do we keep thinking the world offers something that's comparable or adequate if it only comes from Him? Have you received the lasting peace of Christ yet? Have you received it? It starts with a conversation. It starts by talking to Him and simply saying, I'm done with the peace I'm seeking and I want to receive the peace that you have, the lasting peace. So my peace I leave you, and I told you we'd take a look at my peace I give you. It's really something that you hear at the end of almost every service, if you've been live streaming or if you've been in person with us. Almost every service ends with, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May He turn His face towards you. May He be gracious to you. May He shine His face upon you and may He, you fill in the rest, give you His peace. Every service we end by Jesus saying, may He give you His peace. May He give it to you. It's like a a gift that He's holding out for you at the end of each service to receive before you leave for the week, to receive the peace that He gives. And so may the Lord who created all things, may He be the one who keeps you. May He be the one who turns His face towards you. May He be the one who gives you His grace. May He be the one who grants you His peace each and every day. So giving peace. Jesus really wants each of us to receive it today. I think the problem at times is that we've got too much in our hands and we're too full of other things that there's not enough room to receive what He has for us, which means that something's got to go. If He's going to give us His peace, we've got to make room. We've got to get rid of some things. We've got to make some room so that we can receive His peace. I simply call this an exchange. An exchange has to take place. I have to be willing to give up some things so that I can receive what He has for me. Prophet Jeremiah puts it this way in Jeremiah 33. He says, I will cleanse them from all their trouble and sin. I will cleanse them. It's almost like washing your car when you go to wash your car and all the dirt falls off. You've gotten rid of the dirt and you've replaced it with something that's clean. And Jesus is saying through Jeremiah, I will cleanse you to get rid of your dirt so that you can receive the peace that I have. It's an exchange. Psalm 103, he doesn't treat us as our sins deserve, but as far as the east is from the west, so far has the Lord removed our sin. It's an exchange process. He gives you something, but you've got to be willing to to get rid of something. He, he takes your chaos, your trouble, your anxiousness, your disparity, your, and in place of it, He gives you His shalom. It's an exchange. It's an exchange that takes place. I'm not sure about you, but in my life over the years, I've learned that as I trust in Him more, as I receive His peace more, a calm just comes over me and the troublesome things seem to fade away. Now, that's my testimony. You can't argue with me about that. If I share that with somebody tomorrow out in the world, you can't argue against that. That's my testimony. As I trust in Him more, I exchange my chaos for a little bit of His peace. You have that same testimony if you believe and love in Him as well. We're going to sing the song at the end of this service, Blessed Be the Name of the Lord. Pay attention in that song when we sing together, you give and you take away, though my heart will choose to say, blessed be your name. Have you experienced the Lord taking away and also giving? It's an exchange process that we're included in. So how do we include ourselves in this exchange process? I think Paul alludes to it in Philippians 4 when he shares these words. He says, do not be anxious. So so give away your anxiousness. Give away your unrestfulness. Give away your stress. 
Don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. So, so give him what you have, present it to him, and what comes down? The peace of God, transcending all understanding, guards your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Give him your fear. Give him your trouble today, people of the Lord. Give him your stress, and in exchange, he imparts his peace, his shalom. So Jesus left us with peace, and Jesus also gives us his peace. But did you know that he doesn't give it to us just for us? He doesn't give it to us for just us. He gives it to us for us and for our community. He gives it to us for us and for our community. Paul said this in chapter 1, verse 21, when he was speaking of the fruit of the Spirit, and he says, these were not given for selfish ambition. The shalom and peace that God gives to you isn't just for you. It's not just for you, but it's also for your community. It's for those that you come into contact with. I think of Luke chapter 10 as an example. Jesus sends out 72, and he sends them to where he's going to go, so he sends them ahead, which is interesting. And Jesus says, when you get to the house of a stranger and they welcome you in, the very first thing you should say is, peace be to this house. How would our lives change if the first thing we said when we entered into a relationship with a stranger was wholeness, reconciliation, putting back together again? How would that change our relationships if we began with that? First thing you are to say is, peace be to this house. So one thing I did this week is I asked Hillary Eddy, who makes uh, masks. This might mess up my microphone, but I had her make a mask for me with the word shalom on it, which is peace. I think it's pretty cool. It's a reminder to me that no matter what I do, I have to be careful what I say and hold things in, but also whatever I say may be filtered through the word peace. May what I say build up instead of tear down. May what I share, may the things that I declare, may they be words that actually are useful and helpful, and may they be words that say peace. May what I say tomorrow bring about reconciliation. May it bring about wholeness. May it bring about completeness. May it put back together again. May the things that I post on Facebook, oh, there's a tough one, right? But I just want to declare the truth. I need everybody to know how I feel. No, you don't. A lot of people don't care how you feel. Honestly, it's not about just declaring the truth. It's not about just saying it. You know why? Because the book of James tells me. The book of James says it this way. Thanks to Hillary, by the way, for the mask. The book of James says, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims, that's articulation, to have faith with no deeds? If one of us says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? If all you're doing is articulating and stating, what good is it? It's got to go hand in hand with deeds. It's got to go hand in hand with action. It has to be an implication. There has to be a consequence of what we say. Prophet Isaiah in chapter 32 envisions a day when peace rules the land and all the land is restored and the king has come again to rule his land. And listen to what Isaiah envisions when he thinks about the land being made new. Each one, who's the one? You all. When peace is in the land, each one will be like a shelter. When peace lives in the land, you will be a shelter from the wind. You will be a refuge from the storm. I will be like a stream of water in the desert. And we will be like the shadow of a great rock in a thirsty land. You and I are called to be part of an exchange process. You and I are called to articulate and declare peace and truth at the same time that we remove chaos and turmoil and destruction from people's lives. But it has to be both. 
As we declare that truth and give peace, we have to take away a little bit of unsettledness in people's lives. Tammy has a friend who is a missionary in Haiti. Um, her name is Kelly, and she's part of a, a wonderful uh, ministry there. But Kelly, this past week, she, she's a person who declares the truth and peace, but she also lives it each day. But this past week, she posted a picture of this gentleman who is on a bridge. The gentleman is about to take his own life. He's in London. He's just full of chaos. He's full of unrest. He's just full of hopelessness. And as he is standing on the bridge, people notice him, and they begin to rush to his aid, and they start to talk to him. But are they just articulating? They start to grab him, and they tie him with ropes. They, they wrap their arms of love around him, and they hold on to his belt. They put their arms around his neck, and the guy at the top is speaking to him. I wish I knew what he was saying. Look at the grip. Look at the care. Look at the determination. There are so many people today who are barely hanging on. Whether it be uh, dealing with hopelessness through racial inequality, whether it be through mental illness, whether it be through loss, we've got to be there. And we need to do more than just speak, but we also need to hold on to and to grab. Jesus said in Matthew 5, blessed are the peacemakers. He didn't say peacekeepers, which I struggle with because I love to just keep the peace. Peacemakers, you make it. You don't find it, you make it. Blessed are the peacemakers, Mahershal, for they will be called the children of God. Are you involved in the peace process today, family of God? Are you exchanging just a little bit of chaos in somebody's life or just a little bit of shalom? Are you involved in that exchange process? Are, are you bringing food to the hungry somehow? Maybe you have been. I know a lot of you are. Maybe for you, you're clothing those who are naked somehow. Maybe for some of you, you're involved in the adoption process and you're being part of taking care of the orphan. Maybe you're sending letters to prisoners who are even more isolated than they were before. How are you exchanging today? And may we be involved in that exchange process just as Jesus was. That's his call to each of us today. I know we can do this because Jesus promised his spirit as we involve ourselves in that exchange process. Thanks be to God that He includes us in that process. Well, today, as God's people, uh, we get to be part also of a beautiful picture of Jesus Christ who exchanges the chaos in our life for the peace that He brings through the sacrifice of His life. So hear these words again in Ephesians chapter 2. They should be on the screen. And as you consider communion, as you partake of the elements, remember that those who are in Christ, who were far away, are now near by the blood of Jesus, for He Himself is our peace. Jesus is your peace. And as you receive Him again today, never forget that He gave His body and He gave His blood so that you could have peace with the Father. As you partake of the elements uh, together this morning, as you partake of the juice and the bread, as you partake of it here, or maybe you're even at home partaking together, never forget that Jesus gave his body. He broke his body for you to receive his peace. He also gave of his blood. His blood was shed so that you could receive his peace, but not only receive it, but so that you could also give it away. So, children of the Lord, this morning, take and eat and drink when you're ready and remember and believe that the precious blood and body of Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. Let's partake together now.